This is the mysterious death of Marquise Martin in Drew County, Arkansas. It is so important that this case gets out that's still ongoing and his mother, Lakeisha Arrington, needs justice and closure for her only son. So please, please stick around, listen and share the story. So I'm a TikTok and not a YouTuber and typically I'd post there. But despite TikTok extending its maximum video time from one minute to three minutes, that's not even close to enough time to do this case justice. So I'm gonna have to post on this platform for this one. So if you're here right now, do what I do when I'm on YouTube. Just leave this playing listen closely while you cook clean or work out because this story highlights the degree to which racism and corruption still exists in the u.s 21 years into the 21st century and if you want to stay informed while this case develops or other cases that need longer videos subscribe supposedly he was taken to his house in wilmer which is not far away but he never made it when monday rolled around he didn't go to work, and then Tuesday, he wasn't at work. Everyone in his family knew something was wrong. He has a young son, and all he wanted to do was be the best father he could. So it was very, very abnormal for him to not be where he said he was going to be. Marquise worked at the local school, and when he didn't show up to school, everyone at the school was very, very worried. It was very unlike him to not show up for his responsibilities. It was very unlike him to not be where he said he was going to be. This is a problem. Marquis Martin, the story begins in Monticello in Drew County, Arkansas. Quentin Thurman, aka QT, was the last person to be seen with him on February 9th, 2020 at 9.21 p.m. at a Murphy's gas station. Marquis had just clocked out of his second job at McDonald's where Quentin also worked. The weird thing is, Quentin wasn't scheduled to work that night. He only clocked in for a few minutes, then clocked out, leaving with Marquis. After the disappearance was reported, QT was immediately picked up by police and questioned. However, he said that he dropped Marquis off at home and he was let go. It has been speculated by friends and family of Marquis that QT was paid by someone to go and get him. Many people believe that that someone is or is connected to Drew County Sheriff Mark Gober. This isn't just a baseless speculation, as you'll soon find out. QT insists upon his innocence to this day, and he refuses to speak about the details to the family. Oh QT, let's just tell QT, him. pull out the robe, get out, and please talk to her. This is this man's mama, man. This is this man's mama. You can just talk to her. Take her in the Come house now, and talk and to talk her. To her. Marquise was missing for one whole month. During this time, a series of searches was conducted by police and volunteers. Now, from what his mother, Lakeisha, tells me, they conducted these searches all over the place, and what they would do is place ribbons everywhere they would go so they know that they searched that area. But when it came to the area that his body was actually found in, police insisted that they go and search that area and the family and volunteers were directed to go search a different place. Lakeisha, Marquise's mother, believes that they were scoping the area out to find a place to put his body that had been missing for a month already. This is where Marquise was found. And people in town have told her that they drove by that location time and time again, a location that was also searched already, and they had not seen anything down there driving over that bridge every day for work, not seeing anything despite the fact that Marquise was found with a red coat over his head, bright red. Now let's rewind a little bit. The day before Marquise's body was found, Mark Gober was seen driving around with a boat on his truck. Meanwhile, there was a basketball game happening at Drew Central, three hours up north, to which most of the town was attending. The family speculate that this was a perfect time for his body to be planted there because the body was found in that exact location that police insisted they search alone the day before. What do y'all see? What do y'all see, y'all? That's a whole creek. That is a whole fucking creek. So how the hell did y'all drag his... How did Y'all had a boat out here. Y'all had to have had a boat out here. They had a boat out here. To top it off, the sheriff's secretary called in on that day before the body was found and asked about the $25,000 reward money and whether it was real. Tim Nichols, who had run for sheriff against Gober, had also called and asked Gober on the 6th how much money he had 
to find Marquise. He replied $500, and Tim said, I'll triple that, and he gave them $1,500 to help. Marquise was found on that log the very next day. Walk through. You see how this stuff I just walked through? You see how this shit I just walked through? They would have failed. Somebody would have failed and broke some shit. Uh, 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 tore up a shirt or something like that down through there because ain't no damn way. Ain't no way. I'm going to tell you something. This is a main highway right here. This is a main highway. This is a main highway. This is a state highway right here. State Highway 133 That's what that is. So how in the hell, how, I just can't see it. It's too, and at that time, he was got put out there. And who found the body? The sheriff's ex-wife's stepson. This was the day after they inquired about the reward money. You cannot make this up. It's a small town, and word soon spread about the condition of Marquise's body. This cannot be confirmed at this point, unfortunately, but it's something we have to consider as a possibility, with no way of actually knowing for a fact, because the evidence, aka his body, is long gone now. And you may be wondering, what about the autopsy, though? And I will get to that soon. So, there's talk that his fingers were cut off, and he was castrated. Lakeisha did confirm with me that his pants were down when they found him, which only added to her grief, making her think about what else they could have done with him. The KKK is still an active organization in the USA, and Arkansas being one of the states with many such members. In the history of clan lynchings, castration was a common practice. And of course, unsurprisingly, Sheriff Mark Gober is suspected of being a Grand Wizard in the KKK, with many people swearing on their life to me that that is the case. However, I don't want to make any accusations here without hard evidence, but I will say this. If it is true, we will find out. The body, as I said before, was found with Marquise's pants down, his behind out in the open, a bright red coat over his head, and something else. I said I was going to mention the autopsy. So the coroner's report stated that his body had been there underwater for 28 days, which we can safely assume that the body had not been there that long because the area had been searched before. However, despite being apparently submerged in water for 28 days, the head still had a blood splatter and gun residue on Something else significant to note here is that on the bridge where he was found, before he was found, someone had written one shot, one kill. And this was before his mother even knew how he died. And here is a clip of the bridge after the fact, and it says aftermath. Now, when it came time for the funeral, the funeral director refused to let his mother see the body. And of course, the funeral was closed casket. She also told me that as soon as the service was over, the casket was rushed out of the service immediately. If you're still here, I wanna thank you for keeping up with the story so far. And don't go anywhere because it gets even crazier. So keep listening, this story needs to be out there. So why would the coroner have a reason to fake the report? Well, if the sheriff or his people did indeed have something to do with this murder, then perhaps the coroner is a friend of the sheriff's. Something I had failed to mention is that this wasn't any coroner, it was the county coroner. And something else I failed to mention so far is that Marquise's ID was stolen. Why is this significant? When Lakeisha asked why her son's body is in the hands of the county coroner, she was told that it was because if the body does not have any identification, it has to go straight to the county coroner. Friends, family, activists, have attempted to bring this case to a federal level. The FBI have been contacted about this more than once, and you won't believe what they said. Lakeisha, Marquise's mother, has seen the written reply with her own eyes. They said that Sheriff Mark Gober has more jurisdiction than they do, than anyone in fact, in Drew County. He is untouchable. And get this, they said the only person with the power to bring him down is the county coroner. Marquise's ID was found on the side of the road by two men who reported it immediately and Mark Gober showed up and took the ID quickly and left. Marilyn Reed is Marquise's aunt. Her mother was killed possibly in relation to this whole thing. She was at a meatpacking place discussing the case and accusing the sheriff of being involved. Two white men overheard the conversation she was having and said that if she doesn't keep her mouth shut, 
she will wind up dead, just like Marquise. Well, not long after, she was ran off the road. A white man came to Lakeisha's uncle and told him that he wishes to remain anonymous because he is scared for his life. But he told him the sheriff and his people had something to do with running her off the road. Not to mention that the incident took place on the road that the sheriff lives on. And hey, you know, as far as Marquise goes, it's not even the first time in that particular county under this particular sheriff that something similar has happened to a black man. Clyde Lee Robinson went missing on July 25th, 2017 and was not found till almost a year later. And that's just one example. Now, why do I keep bringing up the KKK? Am I certain that they're involved in this? What I find interesting is that TikToker Cass Clay, who has been speaking about this case nonstop, has received death threats from accounts affiliated with the KKK. Now, why would that happen if this case has nothing to do with the KKK and they've been sending him death threats. I also know that the sheriff went to Marquise's cousin's house pissed off asking who the fuck is this white boy making videos about Cass Clay. Everything is very strange. Marquise's fingers being cut off and the castration comes from a friend of the sheriff's son who gets high on meth with the boys. Now on February 12th, Marquise's mother received a text message as well as some of her family members with a ransom note. Let me read this to you. It says, and I quote, this is to let you know that Mac was kidnapped by myself and my men. We demand a ransom payment of $7,000 before we release him back to you alive. You, have not, you are not to tell anyone or the cops about this or he dies. Do not act smart. I am too old for games. If you want this done with peace, I'm cool with that. But if you are calling the cops, I'm fine too. The cops are no threat to me and I don't think I need to show you how dangerous I could be by hurting him. Choose wisely. I have my personal reasons for taking this long before contacting his family. Guys, today's the next day and it's finally time for me to speak about the disturbing Snapchat photo. This Snapchat photo was posted by Noah Gober, Sheriff Mark Gober's son. It says his name right there on the snap. This was posted only two days after Marquise first went missing. It's a picture of a stuffed monkey with the caption, can I help you? Mm. But here is the most disturbing part of all. See, Lakeisha Arrington, Marquise Martin's mother, she told me she was so focused on the racist statement and the picture of the stuffed monkey that she didn't really look around on any other section of the photograph. Three months after this photograph was posted, which is two days after Marquise disappeared, someone sent Lakeisha a disturbing discovery. They zoomed in and brightened the photograph and noticed that Marquise is laying there on that couch, potentially deceased already. Now this photo was taken inside of a camper that was parked on Sheriff Mark Gobert's property. A camper that was frequented by his boys and all the local white boys. This is two days after he disappeared. It's interesting to note too that Noah Goba is now far away in Alaska. A photograph of a man who is missing, a black man who is missing with a racist statement on that photograph posted after he disappeared, immediately after he disappeared, um, when no one knew anything for another month, whether he was dead or alive even, uh, could potentially be dead in the picture. Sheriff's meth head son who since ran off to Alaska, it all seems like very damning evidence. Now, if the sheriff's son is involved in this, if he whether did something to Marquis or knows who did, then there's your motive for that sheriff's department covering everything up. Tell me something. Does this look familiar here? Looks like the same camper to me. And here he is in front of it. As you can see in that TikTok I just showed you, they have also changed the couch since the snap was taken, which is another piece of very suspicious evidence because that suggests you're trying to get rid of some kind of DNA evidence. This entire case is disturbing to say the least. And Marquise's mother, she didn't even know that they had found his body. She heard through word of mouth. There is so much to this case, so much that points to foul play. Um, and we need 
to get this looked at. We need to get this looked at on a federal level, no matter what it takes. We need this case to have national attention. His mother needs closure. She needs peace. Her son, her only son was taken from her. A four-year-old boy had to be told that his dad is never coming home again. We need to do something. Now, as any good mother would do, she immediately forwarded that ransom note, the text message that re she received to Sheriff Gober himself. Let me show you. Once again, this was sent on February 12th, the day that she received the note, okay? He did not respond then. He did not respond on the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, and as you can see, Miss Lakeisha is definitely sending him information and tips on where to look for her son. Anywhere that she thinks that he could possibly be. She is asking for the sheriff's help. Why wouldn't the sheriff want to help? Hmm, I wonder why. Could it be perhaps because he already knows where the body is? Please go look at this. Investigate everything yourself. Follow the Facebook page. Follow the creators that I will list in the description below. They honestly do a much better job than I do. Uh, gathering all the information, telling everything. But just from common sense, if someone submerged in water for a certain period of time, is it is it too crazy to believe that their gun residue and the blood spatter that was on him would have been washed off being in the water? I mean, it's, you would think, right? Like being in the water, the bacteria from the creek water, the whole nine. It, it just, it's really hard for me to believe that he was in he was in the river the whole time I'm gonna say that it's hard for me to buy that I have multiple people multiple reliable sources people who came to me in confidence tell me that they searched that creek top to bottom even some who searched that creek hours before his body was found his body wasn't there I find that very odd. Keese's family has been busy protesting in Drew County since this all started over a year ago. Recently, the police issued a town ordinance placing restrictions on the protests, saying that if you want more than 20 people to appear, you're gonna need a permit for that. Marquise's aunt, Marilyn Reed, says that it's a real slap in the face, that while they are seeking justice actively for Marquise, this ordinance was issued. They feel that they're trying to be silenced. We gotta help them. Thank you so much for listening. Please follow the other creators I will mention. Um, some are on TikTok, some on Facebook, YouTube. Um, follow me, of course. Um, I'm gonna keep this updated as things keep going. Um, I'm on TikTok and now I'm also gonna be on here on YouTube to be able to post some of my longer videos like this one. Again, thank you so much for being here.